Please listen carefully. So I looked around recently and I realized something. I have issues. Organizational issues. As you can see, most of my stuff is in bags right now or just in a general bin. I need to improve this setup. I need to be able to find components that I'm looking for. And this is not ideal. So I think I did a pretty good job here and you can see that I've organized a lot of stuff. So now it should be very easy to find what I need. But I always seem to have trouble finding that one missing sock. Wait a m There's a full package of bacon in here! So of course this is not the full extent of what I have. There's plenty of more organizing to do. However, so far so good, and I'm going to keep adding to this as I go along. I guess if you've stuck around this far, then you're interested in how I made these labels with the thermal printer, and that's what I'm going to be explaining next. So this is the thermal printer I have and use. Um, this is an old thermal printer by Epson, and it was given to me by someone that wanted to throw it out. Now, um, the model number is right here. On the back end, you can see that you have a parallel port and a serial port to communicate with the printer. And this is the power that comes in. On the back end of it, you can see that there's a port over here where you can access dip switches to change configurations um, on the printer. Now, if we open up the thermal printer, you should be able to see and make out this array here. I'll move it for you. So this array is a resistive array that heats up the paper and that's how the thermal printer actually prints. See the thermal printer controls very precisely a series of heating elements that are in this array and it heats up the paper in a very precise way and that's how you get you know pixels or letters or images on the paper. Thermal printer paper is actually pretty interesting in of it itself because it is really sensitive to heat as it should be in order for you know text to appear from the thermal printer. So if you want to have a little bit of fun uh, you can take your fingernail and just rub it really hard on the thermal printer paper and you will see a nice line just from the friction that that causes. Another way of doing the same thing is taking an ordinary pencil and just from the friction alone you you can make lines which you know isn't that fun but you get the idea the thermal printer paper is really sensitive to heat. What I originally thought is that this thermal printer paper is coated on both sides, but that's not the case. 
you can see that there are clear lines here that we have made, but there's nothing on the back. So only one side of this thermal printer paper is actually coated in the heat sensitive material. Another way to show just how sensitive this paper is to heat is of course to use a lighter. So here we go. Again, nothing on the back, but it's very black on the front. Have you ever been at the grocery store and, you know, somebody asked you to sign the receipt? Well, you can also take your favorite soldering iron and just write your signature. Very easy. So when it comes to the width and the size of the thermal uh, paper that you're using, my printer can support a maximum of an 80 millimeter width on the thermal paper. Uh, so all of these are about 80 millimeters in width. Um, they vary slightly, like this one is like 79 millimeters. Uh, this, this one is, you know, 80.5 millimeters. So, so they vary slightly, but they should be all around 80 millimeters for my printer. Um, your printer may be different. Uh, my printer also supports um, printing in a different width, but I stay to the maximum 80 millimeters. Um, in, in fact, I think the, the, the limit of, of the width that you can put in the printer is 83 millimeters. So if you're below that, then you're fine. Um, 80 millimeters is approximately equivalent to three, three and a quarter inches. So if, you, if you're searching for thermal printer online, um, you, can, you can search for like three inch thermal paper, three and an eighth, three and a quarter inch thermal paper, and you should be just fine. Um, same goes for 80 millimeters, you know, you can search for 80 millimeters, 81, 82 millimeters, you know, up to 83 millimeters, you should be just fine. Um, as far as cost goes, so um, as far as I've seen, you can get, this is by far the cheapest thermal uh, paper you can get, um, the non-sticky kind. And I believe you can get, I think up to 10 rolls. Uh, on eBay for about 20 bucks. So not bad at all. Um, but obviously if you're labeling things, you want the sticky kind. And so um, this is a non-continuous roll, but um, these, these are uh, three inches by, I believe, five or six inches long um, stickers. And I just, you know, cut them up and uh, label things with them. So, so this one roll cost me, I believe, 17 bucks. Um, now this pack of thermal paper, it, it, I mean, it's a little smaller, obviously, but this entire pack cost me uh, 15 bucks. So depending on what you want, what you're going for, you know, you can spend more or less. You, you don't have to spend a lot. Um, now, the reason I, I bought this pack is because this, these rolls are actually continuous. They're not, they're not separated like these stickers are. So I'll provide some links in the, in the description so you can, you can see what I bought exactly. So when I started printing with sticky thermal paper, I ran into this issue of the lettering coming out very faint. Obviously this is caused because this paper has a wax backing to it and it just makes it difficult for the heat to transfer through onto the paper. The way I fixed this is I had to actually go to the back of the printer and open up a cover revealing some dip switches. Now those dip switches allowed me to change the print density selection of the printer and once I did that, um, everything came out much, much darker and just better overall, as you can see. To look up general information about the printer and printer commands, I'm looking at these three documents. These will be in the description. To communicate with the printer, I'm using this very generic parallel port to USB adapter. 
it hasn't given me any issues. Once I hook up the adapter to Ubuntu Linux, it recognizes it easily as a serial device. If we type in dmessage, we will see the device's information. It's important you know the device's name, as well as the vendor and product IDs. You can open up the terminal and start talking to the printer, as long as you get some security permissions out of the way, which is what I'm doing first. You can see I'm using Echo to send my message to the printer, which, like everything, is a file in Linux, hence the file path. Knowing the hex commands of the printer, you can do anything you really want. Oh sh As fun as this is, a more useful setup is using an actual library like this Python one I found. Link will be in the description. This library has proper documentation and allows you to communicate with the printer through serial, parallel, or internet connections. It not only allows you to print text, but to also print images, QR codes, and barcodes. This is an example of some simple coding I did in the Gini development environment application using the library. You can see I initialized the printer using its vendor and product IDs. This code is to print an image, which I have commented out. This code is configuring the text settings, and here I have the text I want to print out. At the very end, you can see I also tell the printer to cut the paper. Not to cut things short, but that's all I have for this video. And as always, thanks for watching.